back at it you guessed it bingo topics we're going to look at a couple of different things the snap analysis upcoming impending trade deadline and unfortunately some injuries as well and much more what's up it's your boy centron coming back at you with another analysis video and i kid you not that's my real name and like i said today bingo topics we're going to be hitting to a couple of things but first let's look at the snap analysis and see who played well who needs to get more playing time and who needs to be reduced all right, quarterback Jalen Hurts. Obviously, he's going to be the QB one, but uh, let's just evaluate his performance. The best he's had this season as of yet. Two TDs and more importantly, no interceptions, no turnovers. Um, he looked more comfortable and uh, he did target AJ, but, you know, he was able to expose a weakness on that defense that uh, Emmanuel Forbes being in coverage against him. And, uh, you know, just ply away, ply away, ply away, and then, wait for your instant, wait for your moment. Um, try the double moves and he was just susceptible, you know, twice in uh, very critical situations, both times being a touchdown. So um, we're still gonna be finding our offensive rhythm, but I like what we're doing so far and um, we're building towards it. You know, it's, it wasn't gonna be a rush job and we're still a top three scoring offense in the league, even finding our bearings, which is crazy. All right, um, running back DeAndre Swift. Um, I'd say he, he deserved a few more carries. He had a four point yard average. You know, we just didn't stick with the run enough for my taste today. Um, even though you could say, given the result, you know, results are everything. Um, Jalen Hurts had a very successful day throughout the air, but there was a couple of times where you could see we needed a little bit more balance. And um, it, it just, it, it, it doesn't bear out well. Um, that we are not leaning on the run game. I, and, you know, it was one of those games that set you on it, set it perfectly where we were like licking our chops. Oh, well, we can lean on the pass here. We make some of the, you know, the way the, the game's flowing. So, um, you know, game well, he wasn't giving us much. He just doesn't have the same pop that DeAndre does when he's in the game. Um, and, I mean, you could say the numbers. I mean, it, it, of course, they, um, they pretend out too. So, you know, Swift getting the line share. But I would like to see him get a couple more carries in critical situations where, like, it's, you know, especially like the third and 11, where we run it there. Why is game well being entrusted with that? And why are we running that play, you know, regardless? So um, it, it, I definitely don't want to wear him down. I want to, you know, like I said, keep it within the, you know, uh, 15 to 20 um, rushes. You know, 15 and 20 touches wouldn't be, um, I would say 20 touches would be perfect for me but um yeah it's a careful thing you got to keep a watch on and we're not trying Rashad Penny at this point we don't trust him so eh, interesting man all right anyways wide receiver snaps um Olamide Zacchaeus I think he deserves more snaps um even when Quintus comes back he's just shown um just that he gives us quality um there and maybe it's because he has more experience and he's more well suited for the slot but he only made um, one catch. He had two targets. The other one had um, a bad placement. And, yeah, he, he just gives us, you know, extra element that Quez just, he's very feast or famine when he's in there. And it's just more consistent. So I, I like um, the way the offense, you know, where, where it's headed with Olamide in there. So sorry, Quez, but he doesn't be more like our gadget slash um, deep threat. But I, I would, that's, Rod would go and um we definitely got to get more uh targets he's playing 71 snaps only saw maybe three or four targets um maybe two but zach i mean not zach sorry dallas got it we got to get him untracked because with him being the true third element you know team this would begin to fret a little bit more and um focus on covering him and that takes coverage away from devonta and aj and that can only make things better with the emergence as well of a third receiver, which I, we're not gonna key in on Olamide, just you know have him pop up on the radar, a blip here, a blip there. But these other guys, they don't really deserve you know playing time. We're not even getting Dallas the plays he needs. So, um, offensive line, um, everybody here played well. You know the concerning thing is that Cam Jurgens went out. We'll address that a little bit later. Um, what's what could be the short term solution? Uh, to that area but yeah um Malata didn't have the greatest day but he uh 
you know, he, he fought through it. You know, so he's going to be days like that. And they're going to try to get in the film room and, and work out those kinks. Edge rushers. Um, Hassan Reddick, you know, he, he deserved to get the number of snaps he did. And first game back, I mean, first game, you know, back without a cast. And, yeah, he looked, you know, pretty pretty good. And um, the the edges were, um, were, were working, uh, playing hard because – um, they got outshined by the uh, the the interior, but I mean they set up so that they can be successful this game, and that's just what happened. And also at the you know the next level as well. Um, Brandon Graham, I mean I think you know nobody here deserves like a lot of stuff. I, I think Nolan Smith he he had offsides, and I'm with gradually increasing his snaps, not just you know all of a sudden not undeservedly so. So that is a thin balance there, like in obvious. You know, rush, rushing, uh, um, pass rushing situations. I'd put him out there, and especially on you know, long distances, so we can c- quickly close the gap and get the ball out of you know quarterback's hands. But in clutch situations, I don't, he, I don't think he's earned that yet, and that's just where I'm going to stick with. Um, but yeah, Sweat was also a monster out there. Um, these two guys wreaking havoc, and hopefully, hopefully, this is just a start. As I think each had a sack in the game. Interior, man, Fletcher Cox. For me, just too many snaps for my taste. I, you know, want to dial it back because I want to save him for the rest of the season. Play him in only try to, in you know, only in critical situations or um, at you know drives at a time, you know, um, or there are times, you know, spaces in the drive at a time. I just don't want him to wear down. That's my only concern. Jordan Davis, I feel like he should have gotten more snaps in place of Fletcher, but you know, whatever they saw, it it did. Uh, it did work because, you know, we were shutting down the run game for the most of the, you know, the game. Um, Ken Tavis, I haven't noticed him up to this point. Marlon just plays solid. I don't notice him unless he makes a play. Milton, I haven't seen him, but I know he's he's been flashing. And Jalen Carter, I know that they were doubling um, him and uh, Jordan Davis when they were in the game. So, you know, that actually, um, you know, is a shout out to them, you know, especially, you know, four games into his career. He's being that respected by the rest of the league. You know, we got a player in him. So linebacker here, Nicholas Morrow, 77 snaps. He's interestingly rated as PFF's second off-the-ball linebacker um, behind Rokon Smith, which, you know, Rokon is an excellent player. So that just tells you um, that, you know, he's elevated his, his game, even though he started out the season not even on the practice squad. Um, a, a, a later addition, and then having him... Um, come up when Nicobe Dean went out. I think he deserves more snaps. So I think that would send, you know, I don't think this, I don't think this would happen, but I would send Nicobe Dean to the bench and let him and Cunningham play. Cunningham also, you know, um, is running around like a chicken with his head cut off, you know, in a good way. He's everywhere and anywhere on that defense. And Nicholas Moore had three sacks due to the, you know, that line uh, playing their part and then being able to, um, to, you know, plug, and, and let him just step in and uh, you know, find his way to the quarterback, whether it be through the A gap or B gap. Um, but he's, he was able to shine, you know, almost double his career output in sacks because of the guys in front of him playing um, very well. Um, this is the one I don't – it's funny. Um, they played terribly. As a collective, I would say Tara Edmonds was the worst out of the bunch. And uh, he just was out of position. Um and didn't you know he's underwhelmed for me at this point, but um, not ready to give up on him, especially as a secondary option. Considering he's not our first, um, I'd love to see how we look with you know, this secondary in completion uh, with Justin Evans being back. James Bradbury, I just I don't like him in the slot. Um, I feel like he's out of place. It's a completely different position for him. Just don't think it, it's the best move. Um, Josh Job, I think he's fine. Um, he. He's going to take some L's because, you know, he's a first-year starter. I say starter because he's on the outside. But um, I wish he could play in the interior and then let Bradbury handle the outside so he can, you know, just get used to not going inside and outside. It's different techniques and different, you know, position, like I said. Um, Reed, excellent play. You know, he's the glue on the back end for us. And Darius Slay didn't play all that bad to me. My whole thing is with the scheme. Um, the off-man coverage, I don't really understand it. I don't really... Um, no, understand why we're uh, trying to read, you know, um, read and then react. 
instead of dictating the you know the uh, releases of the receivers and playing up and, and bumping them and uh, making things tight because our, our line can get there. Why are we affording them extra time? Which is what I would say. But um, let's get on to the rankings here. Um, the trade deadline is on the horizon. You know, not now. I think it's like week eight um, or week nine or week ten. One of those. Um, but what could we do to address some needs that we have? You see that guy there, um, slot corner. It's, it's just, it's been an Achilles heel for a couple of years because this guy here, Avante Maddox, hasn't been able to stay healthy. And uh, he's out again. It's most likely for the year. If he does come back, it'll be like for the Super Bowl. But, you know, even then, you don't you want to bank on that. Mario Goodrich, you don't trust him for whatever reason. Um, we, we'd rather go with, I've, I feel like a, not so good option in Bradbury over what we feel is a bad option in Garrett. I don't know, man. I don't. It was it was the Vikings, and it was, he was going against Jay Jetter sometimes. So for me, that's that's tough to say that he shouldn't be out there. I don't I don't know. I I, I play him, but you know that's their call. And um, could we go for someone like I, Isaiah Moore or Isaiah Rogers on um, on the Colts? You know, a slot guy. Um, yeah, we, we need some answers. Like, I think Sidney Brown um, would be fine in the slot, but he's not healthy at this point, so that leads us down another guy. So do we trade for a guy? Um, safety, I think it's fine. I think we just need one more guy to fill out, unless you're going with the Buddha Baker to uh, break the bank and also uh, truly upgrade a position for this year and then I think for the uh, next two years as his contract is up after the 2024 season, I believe. Um, linebacker, do we trade a guy off? I don't know. I would keep this depth and maybe cut Christian Ellis and put him on the practice squad. That's what I would do. Um, but there's a couple of options and we could look to, uh, to wheel and deal, not just on the receiving end, but on the giving in as well. All right. Cam Jurgens, we know that he's out. Gonna miss several, uh, next several weeks with a foot sprain. So, you know, um, like I said, you know, the pendulum, pendulum swung back this way as far as the injuries go, and we're on the suffering end as far as this this season. But you got to wheel and deal and roll and roll and dole as you go because, you know, um, injury gods they show no favor to anybody. Um, may curry some favor, but this year we haven't. And what are the potential replacements for him? Tyler Steen or Sue Opeta? Um, if Steen is too green, I wouldn't put him out there. Um, yes, he has a spirit of talent, but is he the best player right now at this moment? Because um, we have these guys upcoming, Aaron Donald, Quentin Williams, Christian Wilkins, and again with the commanders, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. And I don't, I'd rather go with a guy who's more experienced, who we, we can um, not expect great results out of, but we can know what we're getting. Right? Whereas, you know, it could be a blown assignment and, you know, Jalen Hurts is taking a sack you know, pressure in his face, getting blown up. Um, that would be where I could turn my worries. So I would say you stick with Suo, Suo Peta and then uh, wait for Cam to heal up. All right, rookie report card on the Commanders. So uh, versus, I mean, on the Commanders game, Jalen Carter. So um, Jalen Carter has already set a high, high bar for expectations. I think a couple of people think uh, thought he would dominate the game after Washington gave up nine sacks last, season, last week. But the way they played him, you know, they doubled him. So, you know, they took away that. So it allowed other people to make plays. While he didn't fill the box score the way people expected, he still had a hell of a game. He consistently drew double double coverage on passing and running downs, creating one-on-one -on -one opportunities for his teammates and creating free lanes for blitzing linebackers, like we just said. That's why Nichols Morrow was able to have the game he had because of the guys up front. Like a productive running back, putting up 150 yards, being... Uh, behind a dominant offensive line. It's hard to see Nicholas Morrow getting three sacks yesterday without Carter paving the way. Exactly. Jalen Carter almost had a second, same Howell, but Howell broke his grasp. Yeah, you know, you got to be better on the scramble drills with the quarterbacks, um, locking them down. Um, I mean, uh, predicting their moves, uh, predicting that, you know, where the space might be, where the, how the pocket's going to collapse. And was able to pick up a few yards with his, with his feet. Carter probably doesn't let him get away next time. Yeah, exactly. He learns that, okay, this is how a guy likes to roll. Let's roll with him. All in all, a more workman-like game from Carter where he played almost half of the defensive snaps. and was a load for the Washington O-line for four quarters. Yeah, so 
he definitely, um, you know, brought it. They respect him. That's why he's getting the double teams. So, you know, the casual fan looks, oh, he's not having an impact like he did last week or, you know, previous weeks when, you know, the opponent knows how much respect they're giving him and how much uh, credit they're sh showing by, you know, giving him um, that uh, much coverage. All right. Um, Nolan Smith, yeah. I mean, the only place that out was the, the penalty, and, yeah, you don't want that. But uh, all the other guys didn't play. Um, Eli Ricks on his special teams as well as Key Ringo. They're not ready, so that's why they're not out there. Keep seeing people, you know, call their name. They'll play when they're ready, and it could be a case that we're not. Um, we're missing that, but I like to side with my guys. All right, last thing we're going to get to here, Eagles open as road favorites for the Rams game. I get that. Um, I would say, like, I don't know, I would give us a couple points because – they can be dangerous. Matthew Stafford um, has found again, you know, found the youth. Um, going back to the Super Bowl season, he played better. Um, Cooper Cup might come back this week, and then they have the, the rookie Nakal having a, a nine catch, one hundred sixty three yard outburst with the touchdown. Man, um, it could be a tough ask this week for our guys, but I want to see us come up and, and, and cover. I feel like if we don't do that we're putting this game at risk again to get beat by an upstart and we're going on the road and it's a con you know consecutive road games against them um and I forget who our opponent who was our opponent after this I think it might be not the Bills not the Dolphins I'm forgetting who it is but man I think you know, we have two road games upcoming so we'll see how that goes um yeah like I said dangerous road uh, uh Rams team and now that we have that injury Cam Jurgens not out there Aaron Donald, I mean, it was already going to be a task with them out there. Now you have a, you know, um, replacement level guy. Um, somebody who's just holding down the fort. They're going against him. And we'll have to scheme against that. You know, hopefully run right at him. Anyways, we're going to get up out of here. That's all we have for today. But you're not even watching, though. It's all good, though, because I love making these videos. I love talking about the freaking Eagles. So as always, as always, it's fly, Eagles, fly, and let's motherfucking go. Fly, Freddy. They're, they're coming. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.